piece of music I would like to play for you is a jazzy adaptation of a beloved Christmas carol, What Child Is This? And it is written by Frank Matus. Welcome to Worship, hosted by the First Baptist Church of Beverly, Massachusetts. We have folks worshiping with us from various locations, various parts of the country this day, as well as right here on the North Shore of Massachusetts. Jesus says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am also. So know that wherever you are worshiping from this day, know that Jesus is in the house with us. My name is Kent Harrop and I'm on the pastoral staff here at First Baptist in Beverly, and sharing with me in worship this day are my colleagues, the Reverend Julie Flowers and the Reverend Jamie Crumley. Dr. Esther Chang will be bringing music and introducing a variety of musical guests this day. The lighting of the third candle of Advent will be provided by the Trembley family, as well as they will be setting the manger scene. The Tremblies are leading us in worship from their home this day in North Carolina. It's one of the, the beautiful reminders that we gather from various places and we are one church. So welcome to all. After worship, there will be a fellowship Zoom and you can gather and um, make some new friends and just say hello to some longtime friends and offer a prayer request if you'd like and that will be immediately following worship. The Zoom link can be found on our church Facebook page, on our church website, or on Instagram. We hope you can gather with us. Each Monday throughout Advent at 7.30 p.m. via Facebook Live, Reverend Jamie is leading the lighting of the Advent candle for that week and a brief devotional. On the following Sunday, this coming Sunday on December 20th, will be Music Sunday, 
and the rich variety of music which makes this church so special will be offered to us virtually at 10 a.m. So if you want to hear some great Christmas music, we hope to see you next Sunday at 10 a.m. And December 21st is the winter solstice, and we will have a Facebook premiere at 8 p.m. And First Baptist is hosting an interfaith longest night service. The darkness of the season on the winter solstice serves as a metaphor for the challenges during this pandemic. But we'll be gathering to remember that we find hope in community and that we will be opening to the wisdom of a variety of faith traditions. We will be honoring our diversity and honoring our commonality. So put that on your calendar as well, December 21st at 8 p.m. for the longest night. So take a deep breath. There is so much to receive this day, so many blessings, so many wise words and some great music to look forward to this day. Come, let us gather for worship as we hear one of the great hymns of the church. Good morning. My name is Cameron, and I'm here with my brother Zachary and my mom Lee. Our family is part of the First Baptist Church family, and we love being, being able to join you here from our home in North Carolina. Worshiping together here in this virtual space has been a reminder to us that even if we are separated by distance, we are a church family, and we are the church, and we remain connected at heart in God's spirit. That connection is important at all times and all seasons of the year, but we especially need these connections during this season of the year. At Advent, we are waiting. At Advent, we are hoping. At Advent, we are exploring the ways in which we are the people walking the darkness, waiting for God's light, living in hopeful expectation, moving toward the light, walking toward the light, preparing our hearts and our very selves as we would the manger, ready to receive the Christ child. This Advent, our church family has been exploring the gifts with, with which we walk as we move through the, the season of preparation. The first week, we lit the candle of hope as we thought about the words of the prophet as the prophet of the prophet Isaiah, words crying out in the darkness, calling us toward, toward a life of love and peace. The second week, we lit the candle of expectation. As we thought about Mary and what she would have felt as the angel told her about the special baby she would have and about the ways in which we also wait with expectation and that waiting can feel both miraculous and difficult all at once. And this week, the third week of Advent, we will light the candle of joy. And we will consider the joyful message the angels proclaimed to those shepherds out at working in the fields and the joy with which the shepherds responded when they saw the infant Jesus. And we will consider too the ways in which we are called to walk with the joy during the season, even and through the darkness. So come into this time, bringing your hope. Come bringing your expectation of goodness. Come bringing your joy. Come, let us worship. <laughs>
On this, the third Sunday in the season of Advent, we are invited to walk with great joy. You might remember a couple of weeks ago on the first Sunday in Advent, we read together from the prophet Isaiah, the people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness on them, light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. We are called on this Sunday to really figure out what that means to say that God has increased our joy. Even in a time of darkness, we are filled with joy. Where is God finding you today? Perhaps you're in a home, perhaps you're in an apartment, perhaps you're traveling somewhere, perhaps you're in the woods, perhaps you're out in a park, wherever you are, God is there with you. My friends, during this portion of the service, I invite you to invite God into whatever space you find yourself in this morning. And most importantly, I invite you to invite the spirit of the living God into your heart that your joy may be increased. Will you please join me in the prayer of invocation? After I have said the prayer of invocation, which just means that we will be inviting God into our hearts during this time of worship, please join me in saying the words of the Lord's Prayer. We will display the words on the screen um, when I pray the prayer so that you can join along with me. Please use whatever words of the prayer are most comfortable for you. In our tradition, we typically use the words debt and debtors, but use whatever language feels most sacred and comfortable to you when we say that prayer together. My friends, will you join me in the prayer of invocation? Lord our God, we invite you into whatever space we find ourselves in today as we watch this service. But Lord, more importantly, we invite you into our hearts. Lord, we are ready for you to increase our joy. We are ready for you to be our light as we walk through a time of great darkness. So come into our souls, fill us with that holy sacred light, and let us be able to, at the end of this service, to go out and to share that light and to share that joy with the world. And now, my friends, will you please join me in saying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen and may it be so. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter, verses 8 through 20. And we hear in this passage words that may feel familiar from the Christmas story, words of the shepherds and their encounter with the angels who come to bring them news of incredible joy. So whether these words are familiar or whether you are hearing them for the first time, I invite us all to hear them anew with the ears of our heart. I will be reading this morning from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, but if you are following at home, I invite you to use whatever translation is most familiar and most comfortable for you. Hear these words from the Gospel of Luke. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. 
To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. May God bless the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of these holy words. Good morning, friends. We have now come to the time in our service that we call the Step Sitters. And the Step Sitters time is a time that is especially for the young people in our church and, of course, for the young at heart. And so I invite you to gather around, get close to your computer or TV or however you're watching us today, and join us. I'm Reverend Jamie, and today I would love to talk, talk to you about what it means to have joy. We're in the third week of the season of Advent, which is my favorite time in the church year. During this time, we learn what it means to walk with hope and to walk with peace and to walk with joy and to walk with love. This is a very special time in the life of the church where we wait together for the coming of Jesus Christ, who is our Savior. It is at the end of the calendar year, but in the life of the church, this is the start of our new year as we celebrate the birth of a long expected baby whose name is Jesus. Today, what Reverend Kent is going to be talking about in his sermon is about what it means for us to walk with joy. I want you to think back even about the past week and I want you to think about a few things that happened in the past week that made you happy. It might take you a second to think about it but while you're thinking I'm going to tell you about three things that made me happy in the past week. One thing that I really like to do is I like to cook for our family. I like to watch the dog beg for food that she's not going to get. I love the smells in the house as food is being prepared. And I love the happiness that it brings for me to be able to sit down with my husband and with our pets as we share a meal together. And so one thing that made me very happy this week was being able to slow cook a meal and to smell it cooking throughout the day and then to be able at the end of the day to put the final touches on dinner and to be able to sit down at the end of a very long day and to share a meal together. Another thing that made me happy this week, speaking of the dog, was that last Sunday after church, we took the dog to our local park, which is about a mile away from our house, and the dog had a grand old time rolling around in dirt, meeting other dogs, she's very social, she's an extrovert, and running after squirrels. A few of her absolute favorite things. And it's so fun to see the dog so happy over something that to us sometimes as humans feels really simple. The gift of being able to get outside and to see green space. We almost take that for granted. But for the dog, we live on a more urban side of town and she mostly just sees sidewalks. And so for her, when she sees all that green open space, it makes her so happy 
And when she sees other dogs, it makes her so happy. And when she sees squirrels, she just has to chase them. So I'm gonna put in a brief video here of our dog Malia enjoying the park. <laughs> Why are you getting yourself all tangled up? Oh. <laughs> but a third thing that made me really happy is that every Friday I connect with one of my friends named Taryn and we use Zoom to connect and we'll often work together or sometimes we'll just talk to each other and sometimes a combination of the two. Sometimes we're doing more talking than we are working. But I think especially in this time where some of us aren't getting to see our friends face to face, it is so exciting to be able to connect with them online and to have those moments of relationship. Being able to have friendships and relationships makes me so happy. So in his sermon today, Reverend Kent is going to be talking about what it means to walk with joy. And sometimes we think that the word joy and the word happiness are the exact same thing. But these words are a little bit different. Happiness is a fleeting feeling. Making dinner and it smelling so good, that makes me happy. Being able to take the dog to the dog park, that makes me happy. Being able to talk to my friends, that makes me happy. But joy is something that's a little bit deeper than that. In the Christian tradition, what joy is, is this feeling of sustained excitement, this feeling of sustained happiness. And it's something deep. It's a deep feeling inside that we can only get through our sustained relationships with God and with one another. The word joy is a really important word in my life. Several years ago, when I served at a church in Connecticut, a member of the church gave me this little box. You can see it has Santa Claus on it, and it says the word joy, J-O-Y. This word is really important to me, and I've carried this box with me over the past few years. And inside the box are a few things. It has cards that people at that church gave me back when several years ago, when I was moving out to California, as we were saying goodbye to each other. And so I carry around this box and it gives me joy in my memories of my relationships with people in that congregation and the love that we have for each other. And the only reason why we were able to have those relationships is because of the love, because of the sacrifice of a child named Jesus, who came into the world and forever changed everything. Another thing that's in that, this box is a gift that my friend, Reverend Stacy, who's the pastor at that church, gave me from when she went with her family to England. So you can see they got this at the Canterbury Cathedral. And what you can do is use this as something when you pray. Do you ever hold on to something special when you pray? Well, when I hold on to this and I rub it, it helps me to stay focused during my prayer time as I reflect on God and the goodness of God. So in the scripture that you heard Reverend Julie read just a few minutes ago, we learn about the shepherds. The shepherds were out in the fields. They were keeping watch over their flocks by night. And I think there's two main takeaways that we can have from this story of the shepherds. So you might know that to be a shepherd can be a very lonely job. Shepherds work at night. They don't get to spend a lot of time with other people. They are out in the fields. They sometimes can feel really forgotten. But one thing that they did have was their relationship with each other. We learn in the scripture in the very first verse that Reverend Julie read today, right? That the shepherds weren't alone that they were out in the fields together. And so I want you to get yourself a little box. It doesn't have to say joy on it. It can say whatever you want it to say on it. And I want you to get a little card or a little sheet of paper. And I want you to get a marker of whatever color you want. I choose this color because it matches my dress. And I want you to write on this card, this sheet of paper, 
I am not alone. Because you are not. The same way that the shepherds were not forgotten by each other, you have not been forgotten by you. So after you write on your card, I am not alone, fold it up and put it in your joy box. And the other thing that we learn is that God comes to bring us joy. God comes to bring us good news. And so I want you to get your marker and get your card. And on this card, I want you to write, God comes to bring me good news. Can you write that down in your card? God comes to bring me good news. And so you'll write that on your card and you will fold it up and you will remember that when God shows up in your life, God is coming to bring you good news and it's just for you. And you take that joy and you go out as the shepherds did and you share it with the world. And so when you feel a little sad, I want you to reach into your joy box and to remember that you are not alone. And I want you to reach into your joy box and remember that God comes to bring you good news. That's not just for you, it's for people all over the world. And you have the pleasure of being able to share it with others. My friends, will you join me in the spirit of prayer? You can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you. Thank you for the relationships that you have given me. Thank you for never leaving me alone. God, thank you for bringing me good news. Help me to share the good news with other people. It's in the name of Jesus that I pray, amen. Thank you friends for praying with me and for sharing this time with me. I will look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.
When reflecting on what the Advent season and Advent moment mean for us on our human journey, Frederick Buechner once wrote, for outlandish creatures like us, on our way to a heart, a brain, and courage, Bethlehem is not the end of our journey, but only the beginning. Not home, but the place through which we must pass if we are ever to reach home at last. So come, as together we walk this Advent journey and as we continue to journey toward home at last, home in God's love and home in the kind of inbreaking reign of peace and love and justice and kindness that God is calling us toward. Come together as we seek not to find our end, but our beginning anew in Bethlehem this year, reflected in the tiny child that is waiting in the manger. Come and bring your full self into this season, but bring your full self into this moment of prayer now in our time of worship. Bring all of who you are, not only to this walk through Advent, but before our God in prayer. So let us pray together, bringing all of ourselves, our full human selves, our hearts, our brains, our souls, and our spirits together before God in prayer. Let us pray. Loving and most gracious God, God of all the seasons of our lives, draw near to us on this day as we continue our journey through this unique and special season of the church year. This is a season, O oh God, that stirs our imaginations and awakens a great hope that causes us to walk with joy even when we may feel at the same exact time, like we are the people walking in too much darkness. This is a season, O oh God, when joy is born of hope, the hope of all that is yet to be, the hope and anticipation of the light that is coming, the light that was foretold, the light that will be a gift for the whole world. Help us to ready ourselves. Oh God, this Advent, help us to ready ourselves for the coming of that light, of your light, into our hearts and into our lives. Help us to be open and mindful and watchful as we hope and wait and prepare. Be with us, oh God, as we pray on this day, as we pray for all those in need, for all those in our community, in our nation, in our world. Be with those who we pray for as we see communities that are fractured or in turmoil, people crying out for justice all around our world, people struggling, oh God, with the depth of isolation and feelings of disconnection that come with living in this time of COVID-19, living through this global pandemic. People who are wrestling with loss, with loneliness, with sorrow, with anxiety, with economic and housing instability, with food insecurity, with uncertainty, with confusion about what is the next right step to take in a time that can feel filled with too much darkness. Be with us, oh God, be with all of us. Be with all of those who are in need of your touch and connection on this day. Let your light shine into the places where it is most desperately needed. Be with each one of us and help us to be messengers of your good news and help us to bring light to the dark places in the ways that we can, oh God. 
this Advent season, may we open ourselves to you. May we prepare ourselves for your coming. Help us, O oh God, to be open, to be caring, to be mindful, and to await the birth of the baby in the manger with kindness and caring as our tools. And on this day, O oh God, we thank you too. We thank you for this season. We thank you for the light breaking through. We thank you for those with whom we can walk this Advent journey, connected at heart, even if not together in physical space. We thank you for the wonderful gift that we anticipate so fully, O oh God, the gift of your incarnate self. We thank you, O oh God, for the gift of being able to walk with joy, to carry a song in our hearts, to look toward the light and to journey in love. And it is in the name of that tiny child in the manger that we pray, amen. As we enter into the sermon, please pray with me. God of grace and God of hope, awaken us to the possibilities that come in opening ourselves individually and collectively to the movement of your spirit. May we sense our story in the midst of these ancient stories of that first Christmas. And may God's people say, amen. Tim Hansel wrote a book about 30 years ago entitled, You Gotta Keep Dancing. And in the book, he talks about the difference between happiness and joy. Happiness, he says, is circumstantial. It's based upon good things happening to us. When good things happen, we are happy. And when bad things happen, we are unhappy. I think during this pandemic, as it stretches on now into its 10th month, many of us are feeling a general sense of unhappiness. There are so many challenges in the midst of our own lives personally, or just picking up the newspaper and seeing, or listening to the news and seeing what's going on around the world and in our own nation. Here in the United States, as of today, there are 289,000 of our neighbors who have died because of COVID. And this very day, there are 100,000 of our neighbors across this nation who are in hospitals because of COVID. All of us to varying degrees have experienced a sense of dislocation. Many of us are struggling financially, emotionally, relationally because of all of the dislocation that has happened, all the adjustments, all the losses that have accompanied this pandemic. And while there is the good news of the vaccines beginning to be rolled out and the sense that in several months things will be much better, for the time being, the pandemic is a very real reality for us all. And so there is a sense of general unhappiness. Tim Hansel, when he wrote his book 30 years ago, it was based on his own experience. He was an accomplished mountain climber. And he was also a, a person who took young people up into the mountains for backpacking trips and mountaineering trips where people, young people could explore their, their own abilities and what it means to be in community and also explore their faith. In the midst of one of those trips, Tim, Tim Hansel rope slipped and he fell over 100 feet into a rocky crevasse. And there his back was broken. And for these past 30 years, Tim Hansel has lived with chronic pain. I had an opportunity to meet him several years ago. And in the midst of our 30 minute or so conversation, there were periods when these waves of nausea and pain would wash over his face. Pain has been his constant companion. He's had a variety of surgeries and a variety of medications and nothing has worked. T 
Tim Hansel has every reason to be unhappy. Yet Tim Hansel is also one of the most joyful people that I've ever met. He doesn't deny, nor can he, even if he wanted to, deny the reality of the pain that he lives with. But he says joy is a choice. He says it's rooted in our faith. That deep-seated belief that whatever happens in our life, whether we stand on the mountaintop or whether we fall into the crevasse, that God is with us, that God accompanies us, that God sometimes carries us through the difficulties. And Tim Hansel is saying, that's where I find my joy. And do you and I, in the midst of this pandemic, do we believe this to be true? On that first Christmas, God in the form of an angel, in the voice of an angel, brought the good news to the people, to the shepherds of the birth of Jesus. It's, it's interesting that God chose to come to the shepherds, for they were the outcasts. They were the lowest on the rungs of, the, of popular society, of polite society. You had the kings and the religious leaders at the top, and way, way down were these essential workers who the majority of the culture looked down upon. It's interesting that the Christmas story, the good news, would be brought first to those on the margins, those that society saw as unimportant or were invisible. And who are the invisible ones today? Who are the ones that society deems unimportant? And could it be that God is choosing even now to speak into their lives, into our lives? We pick up the story in Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. But the angel said to the shepherds, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah. Imagine this extraordinary good news brought to those that society looked down upon or didn't even see. Is it possible for us to find joy during this pandemic? For I bring you Great news, I bring you joy, says the angel. Could it be that God is still speaking into our lives, into your life, into my life, offering us the gift of good news? Imagine what happens when we believe that God is still at work. Imagine what happens when we believe that God chooses unlikely ones, unusual ones, like me and like you to bring about that, which is life-giving. Where do we see good news at work? Where do we see God entering into unusual lives to bring about that which is a source of blessing, a source of joy for others? It's easy to look at what is not going well. It's easy to focus upon that which we are un unhappy about, and we shouldn't deny it, we shouldn't ignore it, we shouldn't sweep it under the carpet. Yet we also shouldn't ignore the signs of good news, where the God who spoke to the shepherds also speaks into our lives this very day. So let me share with you some stories of good news, of great joy, and I invite you to to share your own stories of good news with one another. I think of teachers. I've spoken to several teachers recently who are members of this congregation, who since March have been asked to retool their skill set, and as they've gone back into this fall semester, to retool how they teach. Some of our teachers are in the classrooms with all sorts of safety protocols, all sorts of uncertainties, all sorts of challenges. 
Some are teaching virtually, some are teaching a combination of both. But they are putting in the extra effort to learn a new skill set for the sake of our students, to teach to the needs of each and every student to the best of, our, of their ability. And this is profoundly good news. On Wednesday evening, I was on a nationwide conference call of about 125 people. And it was focused on immigration reform. And a number of, of the presenters on this Zoom conference call were dreamers, those who had been brought to this country without documents by their parents when they were just children, some infants. And they have made a life for themselves. But over the last four years, they've lived with the uncertainty, the threat that they might be deported at any moment. But here they are in the only country they have ever known, and they are teachers, and they're students. Some of them are serving in the U.S. military. They are nurses. They are cooks. They are raising families of their own with children born right here in the United States. And they are holding into, onto the American dream promise that the future of their children will be better than theirs. That is good news. I have a friend who is black and lives here in Beverly, where he and his wife are raising their two children. And he told me recently that he doesn't feel safe walking the streets of Beverly by himself, particularly when he gets home from work and goes for a stroll uh, when it is uh, nighttime. He doesn't feel comfortable walking down to Dane Street Beach. He doesn't feel comfortable walking alone. Yet he and his wife are raising their children with the good news that they can follow their heart's desire and they can dream great dreams. They can be anything that they hold close to their hearts. And to have parents like this in the midst of the racism of our time is profound good news. I think of moms and dads, so many right here at First Baptist in Beverly, but in so many other places who are creatively and intentionally pushing down their own fears and, and their own uh, emotional challenges for the well-being of their children, to give them the normalcy of a childhood to the best of their ability, to give them the assurance of their love, and to let their children know that they can rest in that love and rest in the, in the caring of their parent or parents. That is good news. I think of poll workers across this country in little towns and in states who have assured a fair and free election. I think of how they do this for the collective good of all of us. And this is good news. I think of the beauty of creation, this place we call the North Shore, and wherever you may be listening from wherever you may be living, there is beauty all around us. A reminder that God speaks to us in the natural world as much as God speaks to us through one another. There are, there are cardinals at my bird feeder this very morning. The sun is streaming through the windows. There is so much to be grateful for, so much to be thankful for. Tim Hansel tells us that joy is a choice, it's a stance, it's a way of being in the world and leaning into the world. It is rooted in the deep and the profound awareness that God is with us. And that for reasons known only to God, again and again throughout the pages of scripture, God chooses the unlikely ones, like the shepherds, to share the good news. That God came to a young, unwed couple in a backwater town called Bethlehem during a time of military occupation by the Roman Empire. That God chose to enter into the unlikely lives of Mary and Joseph with the good news that they would bring into the world a child. And this child would 
grow up to teach us how to live and how to love and how to forgive, how to be in deep communion with one another as people, in deep communion with God, the source of all that is good, lasting, and true. We see good news right here at First Baptist in Beverly and in so many other churches as well. Here at First Baptist in Beverly, each week we are finding imaginative ways of being in relationship with one another in the midst of this pandemic, letting one another know that we are not forgotten, that we care for one another, that we are the embodiment of God's love. We are the beloved community, one to the other. William Sloan Coffin said, I love the recklessness of faith. First you leap, then you grow wings. I love the recklessness of faith. First you leap, then you grow wings. Throughout this 10 month long pandemic, again and again, we have taken leaps of faith, haven't we? The teachers that I spoke of, the parents that, that I honored in my comments this day, those dreamers, those frontline workers, those who serve in the health field, those who stock our shelves and put themselves at risk to the virus. They have each in their own way taken a leap of faith Joy, says Tim Hansel, is rooted in the deep-seated awareness that we're not alone. That the God who spoke into the lives of the unlikely ones, the shepherds, 2,000 years ago, is speaking into our time as well. We pick up the story in verse 12, and this will be a sign to you. The angel says to the shepherds, you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth, and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. I am bringing you good news of great joy. The challenges of this time are real for all of us. Yet the promise of our faith is real for all of us, too. The good news that we are invited to choose and to claim this day is that the God who came to the shepherds, the God who entered into the story of Mary and Joseph, is entering into our lives and our times. Let us claim this promise. And let us each in our own way be a source of joy of blessing, of hope to one another. This is the good news. Thanks be to God and may God's people say, Amen. My friends, will you walk with me? Walk with me inspired by the feeling 
of great joy that God has come into our dark night, come in to be with us, to save us, to be our redeemer and our healer. And friends, may we be assured as the shepherds were so many thousands of years ago, that God comes to us. God comes to us in all times and in all seasons. God is with us. And that gives us a reason to have joy. This day and forever. Amen.